as Germany and France become the latest countries to suspend the use of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in order to investigate reports of blood clots, just how prevalent have these incidents been and should we be concerned? Well, vaccine expert Professor Beata Kampman joins us alongside Dr Rand, who has had the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here. So um, let's start off with you, please, Professor. Um, I guess, should we be alarmed by this news that we're hearing? Yeah, good morning, Holly. I mean, you know, I guess the horse milk will not have been subjected to the same scrutiny of... <laughs> 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 Quite right. Puts it in perspective a little bit. So, I mean, to say straight away, I understand why people might feel concerned, and that's why it's important that we talk about it. But there's no evidence that these clots uh, are related to the vaccination. And I think we really need to talk about what's an adverse event and what's a causality. And so, uh, when you say causality or a, 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 an event, um, there are, in life, uh, within this amount of people in Europe, there are going to be people who are going, regardless, to suffer from blood clots. Absolutely right. And we know roughly the background rate for that. It's about one in a thousand people uh, per year. And, you know, that is way higher than the numbers that have been uh, reported through the active surveillance system about the vaccines now in Europe. And uh, that's why it's pretty clear that there's no association with the vaccine itself. And so when they were testing the vaccine, clotting, blood clotting, was not one of the side effects mentioned at all? That's right. So the vaccine trials involved over 40,000 people and this didn't come up. But it's not surprising because if you um, measure adverse events in a very, very large population, and we've now vaccinated 10, 11, 12 million people in the UK alone with this vaccine, you will discover events that weren't present in 40,000 people. And this is why we do the safety surveillance after a vaccine has been approved. And funnily enough, you know, the system is now picking up events by chance that will be experienced by people and reported, but they, they have nothing to do with the vaccine itself. They're just events that occur within the period after the event of vaccination. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been you know, so various spats between AstraZeneca and, and Europe, but they've got a dismal vaccination rollout. Um, and now you've got Italy, uh, uh, most of Italy has gone back into a, a pretty much a complete lockdown. Italy, France and Germany enacted bans to the use of the, the vaccine. Um, it comes after Ireland, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Iceland and Bulgaria had suspended the jabs. Austria, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia impounded a batch of vaccines thought to be linked to clots. Um, this this has go, is going to have, and as, as you say, you know, there is no link here. This is going to have a huge effect on people's confidence with this vaccine, not just here, but throughout Europe. I mean, you're absolutely right, Phil, and, and I think there's a really dangerous uh, route that's been taken here because, you know, the, the, the time the EMA is, or the European uh, Medicines Control Agency is going to take uh, and the suspensions, uh, the temporary suspension as a precautionary measure by many countries in the EU that you've just listed there, will risk the lives of people who are going to get COVID in the meantime. And, you know, if you look at the reports from Italy, I mean, I saw it on the news last night, their hospitals are filling up again with people in the age groups that should have been vaccinated by now. And it's, it's really quite uh, disturbing. And I think the doctors are tearing their hair out by now. Mm. And there are some people over here that are saying that, you know, that this is more politically motivated. What are your opinions on that? So, you know, you can always attribute uh, a political motivation to any decision that's taken. And uh, my preference would be to keep the politics out of these kinds of public health decisions. Of course, you know, companies have invested in various countries with various support. And, you know, countries might be uh, um, kind of wanting to support their own products. But I don't think it's about that. I think it's about the European Medicines Control Agency having the mandate over the overall approval of these products in Europe. And if one or two or three countries in Europe say they don't want to um, uh, run any you know, decisions by themselves, they wait for the EMA to uh, make that decision. And we, they're sitting today, and by Thursday we'll have a verdict. And the WHO has already completely endorsed the product, as has the MHRA in the UK. 
Thank, uh, you. thank you so thank much, you very uh, much. Uh, Professor Campman. Um, the EMA yesterday insisted that the rate of clots in vaccinated people uh, seems not to be higher than, uh, than seen in the general population. Uh, this, is, this is the European Medi Medicines Agency here added that its benefits outweigh the risk of any side effects. World Health Organization, as, as Professor Campman said there, similarly rejected the concerns. AstraZeneca has said that it's found no increased risk of blood clots in its analysis of 17 million administers doses. Um, and, uh, and Dr... Phil Bryan, who's a safety expert with the UK's uh, medicines regulator, the MHRA, said the evidence available does not suggest the vaccine is the cause. How dangerous is all of this, knee-jerk? This is... Well, everyone's scratching their heads as to why there's been such a big reaction. And we've got to accept that blood clots happen for lots of different reasons every year. As the professor said, one in a thousand people, that equates to about 65,000 people in the UK mm. every year will have a blood clot related issue every year, regardless of any vaccine. So in let's say 10 million people have received the AstraZeneca vaccine so far in the UK, you'd expect in the week after vaccination, about 200 of those would have a blood clot anyway. 30 cases have been, been reported across Europe. So why is there this massive reaction all of a sudden? I really worry that the damage done by pausing vaccination programmes and the resultant COVID that will happen and the complications mm. will far outweigh any damage that may have been prevented, for example, by looking at these clots, which we don't think are related to the vaccines at all. Um, and Phil said it just then, that this is going to put more fear in people's heads. Yeah, if they already, already had a little is. sort of inkling that they were worried about something. If you're prone to clotting, is it something you need to be worried about? Or do you just go, this has got nothing to do with it, stop worrying? There is no evidence that the vaccinations increase your risk of clots. COVID significantly increases your risk of clots. You've got to remember right. that. So getting COVID is bad news. And if you're clot prone, it's especially bad news. So is there wow. a possibility, though, just um, and obviously there's no scientific evidence, it's all being looked at. Is there a possibility that those people who were vaccinated already had COVID? And so, so they, they, the blood clots could have been caused by the, the efficacy of the vaccine not having kicked in because some of them were a couple of weeks yeah. um, and, and after the vaccine before it had taken effect. Absolutely. Like I said, we'd expect around 200 people every week to have blood clot related issues, regardless of whether they've been vaccinated. Professor Campbell was nodding there. So that is, that is a, 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 a one way to look at this. Absolutely. And, and also the age group um, in which these clots might have been reported might coincide exactly with the age group uh, of the people who've been vaccinated. So, you know, the, the risk of clotting is not universal through the through the society. It depends on, on risk factors, etc. And it's totally conceivable that people were incubating COVID, so to say, as they were getting the vaccine. They weren't yet protected because we know it takes you know, a couple of weeks or so to get the full antibody level. So what Dr Raj is saying is entirely right. Um, can I ask you then, because of course there are side effects, some side, some people, very mild, very subtle yeah, side effects yeah. that some people feel, and that is perfectly normal. So people yes. shouldn't be afraid of that. We've got to accept that any medical intervention has potential side effects. Most people in the 25 million doses or so that we've administered in the UK, the vast majority have had mild side effects. Some people have had quite severe side effects, actually, and that is bound to happen when you are vaccinating so many people. By and severe you're bound side to effects, see... we're talking about... Because I know Flo in our green room downstairs had it the other day and, uh, and she was felt pretty rough with yeah. flu-like symptoms and for it, a couple of days. And it can make you feel pretty groggy. I felt groggy for 24 hours after my first dose of the AstraZeneca. And, and then again, and I then had I was AstraZeneca, had no effect. And you I were fine. slightly sore I've, arm, but nothing at all. I've got my second dose next week. I'm lucky enough to have it. I'm not, I've not got any hesitation about mm. having it because I know that the risks are so much smaller compared mm. to the benefits. Mm. Thank you.